If you were to ask a person what they thought of when you said road maintenance equipment, they'd probably think of a motor grader, a wheel loader, an asphalt machine, a pavement roller. You'd probably have to go way down the list before they thought of the street sweeper. The street sweeper is the unsung hero of road maintenance, but they're a very essential part of the road maintenance process. It's not just a matter of keeping the streets swept up and looking clean and tidy, although aesthetics do matter to the folks in town. It's also a safety issue if dust is allowed to accumulate in piles and the wind picks it up, particularly during the early morning or later in the evening when the sun's low in the sky, it can create a huge visibility problem for the motorists and that can cause wrecks. It can be an extreme safety issue. Also, if it should rain on accumulated dust, it can become big mud puddles, which create slicks, which may cause the motors to spin out when they hit them. And then if that mud <coughs> dries up to become a hard speed bump, if you will, up against the medians or the curbs, it can cause someone to go out of control, or it can act as a ramp and cause someone to drive up onto a curve. So keeping the street swept up is actually a very important safety consideration. Now the street sweeper is the machine that does that and these are very complicated machines. They're expensive machines and the operators have to know exactly how to take care of them, how to make all the necessary adjustments and how to operate them pro properly. Because there are brushes, there are gutter brushes, there's an air system, there's a water system. You have to know how to dump the machine properly out the back of the hopper and you have multiple gauges and instruments to monitor the operation of the machine. The operator has to be carefully focused and pay close attention to what they're doing. And there are traffic considerations as well because they're moving slower than the traffic they're out there running in. So there may be special signage, there may be some work zone considerations like using an escort vehicle or a truck mounted attenuator, a crash truck behind it. But this is what it takes to maintain the roads with these sweepers. Now in this video we're going to show you a pre-operational check, explain a little about how the systems work, and then do a demonstration on how to make a correct pass with a street sweeper. I'm James Bailey with the Texas LTAP program. Today we're with Fort Worth TPW, something that we are kind of keen on here at the UTA, uh, our pre-trip inspection checklist. We just want to make sure that all the significant points are covered on these checklists. Uh, it kind of gives everybody a record, uh, lets everybody know if there was any type of discrepancies um, with the piece of equipment the last time it was used or if any new have popped up since uh, we're doing an uh, inspection checklist this morning. All right, today we're going to go through a pre-trip of the sweeper, Temco sweepers. We walk over here and the first thing in the morning, we pop our hood, come over and check your fluid. We come and check our windshield wiper fluid, make sure it's at the correct level. Then we walk over to the front. We check our oil stick. Make sure that is up to par. Put it back in here and tighten it up. Check our radiator antifreeze. Make sure it's at the max level or a little under. This is our transmission dipstick. Make sure that's up to par and up to the line. Make sure your brake is up the line, it's full. You don't want to drive around with loose brakes. Make sure you come back and secure the hood after you do your check under the hood test. While you're up here, go ahead and check your tires. Make sure they're full, no debris or anything under it to catch it. Come over to the left side. Make sure you check it, make sure the grooves are good and no debris. We talked about lug nuts. Uh, another way to check these without actually grabbing them and looking at them, if you see any type of rust streaks coming off the lug nuts, that's a good indication that that lug nut is loose. Okay. Okay, so if there's any type of streaks on the wheels itself, uh, hub assemblies, if you see anything leaking off of those. Okay, so what we're going to check for is on these gutter brooms, there's different types of material that they'll come in. They'll come in, some of them have a uh, polymer-based type bristles on them. 
and most of them here you'll see that will have the metal bristles. Uh, if they get any below about six inches, four to six inches, it's time to replace those. Yes, okay. Um, another thing that we talked about earlier off, off camera uh, was the slack in these. These are mounted with three bolts, okay? So if you get to a, a point where you can wiggle this and you'll see the center plate move, you need to unbolt it and rotate that 180 and it'll come to three, three more bolt holes and bolt it back in. Uh, these plates are pretty thin, they wear out pretty quick. But This right here, you wanna check this before you start a job if it's not sucking. If that's clogged up, it's not gonna suck. So you wanna make sure that's cleaned out and it's real easy to just and you climb up here. Make sure you check your radiator fluid. Make sure it's full, nice and full. There's an engine oil stick up here. Check that. Make sure it's nice and full to the line. Step down, be careful. Walk around here. We leave this open out there every night to make sure nothing dry rots or molds up. Make sure everything isn't cleaned out. You look inside here, you have your vent that you keep this closed at all times while you're sweeping to make sure everything's cleaned out. Close that. Secure that door. Over here to the passenger side. Make sure that's closed. Usually you turn the switch on the side of the truck. We'll show you that later. And you can just close it right here to make sure it's sealed. Make sure you got a good seal on your sweeper. A mud flap condition is something we, we didn't check on our list. Correct, yes. Yeah, um, you're wanting eight inches off of the ground is, is a legal or standard uh, height for the mud flaps itself. So, okay, this is another gentleman we're working here at Fort Worth. Uh, Van uh, Yarbrough. Anyway, we're going to have you get in here. You would just turn the key forward, uh, put the truck in reverse, make sure the backup alarm works, make up sure the reverse lights come on uh, and then we'll get you to do exercise on the front with the headlights, turn signals and all that good stuff. Okay. okay, thank you. So what we're doing now is checking the reverse alarm and make sure the backup lights are working properly. Headbeams are on. Right. Left signal. Right signal. Okay, so what we're going to check here is the battery cables, the terminals. Uh, make sure everything is fastened and secure. You'll pull this cover here off. Just kind of physically grab the cables, make sure everything's good to go. No corrosion built up on any of them. Uh, good terminal grease on these. Just make sure when you put this back on, to latch and secure it in its proper manner. We're going to demonstrate how to properly drain the water tank for winter time. Also, he's going to demonstrate or show you how you should drain the water suppression system to make sure that it doesn't freeze up either. At the end of the day, also when you have this open, go ahead and turn your dust suppression system on, get all the water out of the system, out of out the lines and everything, and just leave it on and just shut it off and just go on about your business. All right, now we're gonna go check out everything inside this truck that we normally do in the mornings. Crank it up. Make sure everything sockles back and forth. Make sure your old temp is right around 40. Make sure your water is right around four, uh, 140 to start out. Make sure you got good RPMs, around seven RPMs to start in the morning. Just for idle, so you know it's idling good. Make sure your brake pressures are up to 120. Let If not, just let it build. All right, this is the most important feature of the sweeping unit. So what you wanna do, you wanna cut this on. Has all your gauges on it going to start it up so you can make sure all your gauges are coming up temperature gauge is at 81 your engine oil is at 54 air filter is at zero and your voltage is at 
and your death float, you have to make sure it's full, which is at 54% for now, or we'll fill it up. This is your RPM gauge. It shows your engine speed for the back motor. So whenever you raise, raise your temperature, uh, your RPMs up, you'll get up to right speed. Right here is your broom tilt, your screen vibrator. If you get dirt caught in the back of your screens, which we'll show you that, you can vibrate that. Your curtain lift, we'll show you the curtain lift. Uh, your back head motor. This is a broom assist for your uh, back. This is the other broom tip for your right side. This is your broom water for your left broom. Your hopper water, your high output water, your extra hopper water in case you're like it's getting a lot of dust and stuff. You can suit that up. Your extra high output for the up for the right side, and your right side head water, and your broom water. This is your broom lights if you're sweeping at night. Here's your warning lights. Or you have is like a yellow orange beacon light that you use, or work lights, or other lights that's on the back of this that you can use for you know, notified of citizens. This is your dump door. You open it and close it with this. And also on the side, you have a control on the, on the left side. And you have to cut this on first to access the controls on the left side. This is your broom light for your brooms if you want lights on it. And this right here is your indication light, traffic advisor. So when you're driving down the road, you can tell them either go to the left, to the right. You can tell them to go either way if you're doing like a three lane. And flash just let you know that you're there. This is your leaf pressure. So on your leaf pressure, when you open, you can open it to a quarter, a half, and three, four. It just depends on how thick of the leaves are and if you need more air to come through. So we'll go ahead and, and they're right here. These right, this right here, you push this down, you let your brooms down on the, on the right side and left side. What I was talking about the RPMs is that you can raise the RPMs up and see it'll go up to whatever your Pacific. This one will go up to 2000. This will let your head down, let the head down and you'll have an indicator to show that the head is down. Then your broom water, you can turn your broom waters on and then you can uh, turn your water on and it'll show there's an indicator for the water on. And um, go ahead and black this down. And that's pretty much the controls right here. And here's, this is an ASI button. ASI means that whenever you're sweeping, if you need to stop to go across traffic, you can hit your ASI to stop it. Let me go ahead and set that for you to give you an example. Let's get back up to speed. So let's say you're sweeping out in the street and you come to a stop sign or there's a car in the way, you can hit your ASI reset. That brings it down back to the normal, the about 1,000 RPMs. And then when you get across the intersection, you can just Hit that back to resume. And it will go up here in a second. Make sure the light is green whenever you hit it. And there it goes. It goes back up to your 2000 RPMs. And okay, then the next feature I want to show you, let's go ahead and bring this back down. When you get done sweeping, you go ahead and shut everything down and make sure all your waters are off and make sure that you turn it off with the key switch. Next we're gonna talk about your driver control panels. You got one for your left side, which is normal everyday driving. Then you got one for your right side, which is if you're sweeping against a bridge or a curb. So how to work that, you come over here and you sit on the left side, you turn it off. And make sure you pay attention to your uh, attention right here. Wait at least a minute before everything can reset before you switch it over. So we wait about a minute, then we go ahead and switch it over to the right side, turn your key on, let everything go through its normal. Can you crank it up? Now if you notice, on this side that you move it to the right side, you have no gas control on this side. So I can push the gas down all the way and have no gas. So all your gas controls over there on that side. So 
So that's a key thing you're gonna make sure whenever you're swapping over, do not have it running and have it shut off for at least a minute to let everything cycle through. All right, next thing we're gonna show is the actual function of the sweeper itself. If you come over here, you got your water for your brooms. That was send the, uh, the water to the brooms and kick everything out. You got your center panel right here that was the brooms will kick out the dirt to the center then stick it in, in there until they get sucked up. You got your water heads right here for the water to shoot out and get you a good clean. All right, go ahead, Van. Okay, all right, we got the water going and we got the broom circulating. It's gonna kick all the dirt to the center aisle. The center aisle's right there, it's gonna kick it back when it gets sucked in. We got water pressure right here that's going to clean the street. One thing I was gonna show you is that the broom, you see I have the, have the flat on it. The, the flatter it is, the better it can get the lighter stuff and shoot it underneath there. And um, if you want it at a tilt, that's why you can get the bigger stuff and shoot it towards the middle. These right here, these are your um, reverse chains. So main thing, don't back up with it in reverse. If you got it running, do not back up with it. If you do, if you forget, this is automatic will pick it up for you. And then we come around here, like I was showing you about the fire hose on the side. You can put your two inch hose right back here to clean out and there's jets inside there. Let me open up and show you the jets. These are your jets right here. So when you put um, the hose back there, this is another way to clean it out. And just hook it back here. Turn your fire hose on and the water will shoot out through there to clean out the inside, inside of the hopper. And come over here. If you feel like you're If you feel like your uh, thing is not sucking, you can check these flame blades right back over there. Make sure they're all intact. If they're not intact, you gotta get out and fix them. Okay, the water acts as a dust suppression to keep the dust down when you're sweeping, so you don't have to worry about it clouding up the road as much, but it stops it a little bit. This right here is your water hose. You hook up to a fire hydrant to fill up the water tank, which is located right in here. Behind this box, if yours have a box, if not, you have a water tank right there. You'll start seeing that drip out the bottom, you know it's full. So where you'll add your death fluid if it's, need, if it's needed. Your lots, these are your lots like I was talking about on the control panel. These are your broom lots. These are your back lots. And here's your other broom lot. And this right here, this one's a little cloudy. This shows you how much water you have in your tank. It's a little cloudy, like I said, it, uh, but if it's filled up, you'll see how much water is all the way to the top. What we're gonna do here is demonstrate what I call a perfect pass. Uh, basically, we're gonna take the street sweeper, drop the pickup head, ease forward a little bit, let the curtain flip underneath it to create the, the uh, suction. Start the pony motor at a higher RPMs, then we're gonna drop the gutter brooms and we're gonna make a pass down this water suppression system on the whole nine yards, just like you would do out in any other street. And okay, now I'm gonna have this gentleman put the pickup head down. Ease forward so the curtain folds underneath it and we'll idle up. Got a broom on the left side. Pops the gutter broom. Turn on our water suppression system. We're going to start easing forward. As you can see here, the gutter broom is right up against the bottom of the curb here.
notice here. Pickup room. We've got the center section. The gutter broom's obviously got this. The material that the gutter broom picks up off the edge of the curb line hits a center dirt deflector. That center dirt deflector aligns it with that pickup head. The pickup head comes through and it picks it up and puts it into the hopper. So what we're going to demonstrate now is how to, uh, to dump the hopper from inside of the cab. So we're going to go ahead and open it all the way up. So there's a sled type mechanism inside of that when you when you open the door that sled dry, it, it drags down the bottom of the hopper and pulls all your material out for you okay all right now we're going to close it back up now after he gets this closed up we're going to demonstrate how to dump that hopper from outside of the vehicle uh, that way if you if you get out and you see there's excess material caked up in the front of it or anything like that you can get a, a hoe handle clean it out or a rake and drag it back and then actually uh, operate that hopper door from outside of the vehicle. Okay what we're going to do now is demonstrate the outer outside function of a hopper door how to open and close it from outside. I like to take and open up the side door here that way you can look down inside of it see if there's any extra debris hung up or anything like that you need to get a hoe handle and get out or a rake and, and get out of the way. As he opens and closes this door another thing that we want to focus on is the uh, the door sill itself. Okay, so this door sill is real pliable rubber, but what you want to make sure to do is wash it off real good, make sure that it makes a good connection and seals good when you close the door back up. Now this is too large a topic to cover in a video of this length, but if you would like more information or training, the University of Texas at Arlington LTAP program would be more than happy to help you. Please feel free to call us at the information provided below on the screen.